Hello Riders and Rangers, welcome to the fully armed and operational How to Fix Operation Overdrive Part 2. For this season, the villains are called Chiral Lights. As said earlier, Morphin Grid Residual Energy created powerful mutants, similar to Wild Force Orgs, they are monsters using past season Rangers' powers. The Rangers must fight to defend the Earth while being a cleanup crew at the same time. Chiral has existed in the background since the first season of Power Rangers and the DER has been cleaning them up ever since but nothing is absolute, that's why some monsters are born. The boss villains create monsters of the day through using their own chiral energy onto daily objects, Lord Zed style. Kamdor is a cunning and sly ninja grandmaster from Aquitar. Before the events of Ninja Storm, when Kia Watanabe became Lothar and has been banished from Earth, he sets up a ninja school on Aquitar. Lothar taught the Aquitarians how to be ninja. Kamdor was one of the first students of his teachings. Ninjor, a ninja passerby, was intrigued. However, Ninjor realized his evil plans and exposed Lothar, causing the bitter ninja Aquitar civil war. The Aquitarians suffered a lot and the war corrupted Kamdor. Backed by Zordon and Ninjor, the Aquitar alien rangers were able to expel Lothar out of Aquitar. During the chaos, Kamdor was accused of being a traitor, thus he fled the planet. In the M51 galaxy, Kamdor later found the destroyed remnants of the Shogun Megazord and the Ninja Megazord. While exploring in it, the unstable cores of the Megazords imploded. Fortunately, he used his ninja powers to collect the rest of the powers within the Shogun Megazord and he transformed into his current form. He cannot hold the powers of two Megazords, he saves it for his apprentice. Seeing how strong the ranger powers are, he decides to head to the backwater planet with a lot of morphin energy residue, Earth. He plans to obtain and sell chiral lights to the intergalactic black market to gain wealth. With wealth and power, Kamdor will no longer suffer in the lack of power and starvation as he had endured during the ninja Aquitar civil war. He no longer carries the honors of the ninja, but just the basic instincts of one. Although he does have a soft spot for his apprentice and adoptive daughter, Myratrix. Before leaving Aquitar, Kamdor found an orphaned Myratrix and trained her to be a ninja apprentice. Cynical and bitter, Similar to Kamdor, Miratrix and her family were originally from KO-35 but they fled to Aquitar during Karovanouster's invasion. But when they arrived at Aquitar as refugees, Lothar started a ninja civil war on the planet. Miratrix is overly cheerful and happily emotive despite her tragic past. Her entire family is gone, including a young sister who died during Lothar's cruel occupation, Miratrix wants to buy a planet and transform it into an orphanage. Adopting orphans across the galaxy so they can have a place to live. Miratrix wants to set a path for the orphans that she has experienced so they won't ever feel alone ever again. Her goal is to raise and train her orphans to be part of her own army of ninjas. Similar to Fagan from Oliver the Twist, she can have her ninja steal more valuables, sell them to the black market to fund her planned ninja academy for orphans. Later in the season, Kamdor gives Miratrix the chiral energy when she becomes a ninja master herself, she is able to morph into a monster form which resembles the ninja Megazord. In our next villain faction, I might get some flack for this, I would like to redesign Flurius. Since each of the villains are meant to look like a past ranger zord, I would like to redesign Flurius to resemble a megazord powered by the force of wizardry, Flurius resembles the titan megazord. And I would like to have a bit of fun and change Flurius into a witch-like monster, a throwback to Rita. Flurius was a civilian of Briarwood. During the battle between white mystic ranger and mystic wizards against the forces of darkness, she found a fragment of Yudana's wand and when she was in contact with it, it gave her ice power. As she is more intrigued about the magic, she was accidentally sealed into the underworld, home of the Morlocks and forces of darkness. She got corrupted by the residue of dark powers within and it completely transformed her into a sinister witch. After being sealed for so long, she became evil. Due to her being sealed in the side of evil, she has abandonment issues and has learned to never be dependent on others. Thus, she keeps pets around with her for her own entertainment. That is why she keeps Norg the Yeti, as a comic relief. When she has escaped during the events of Mystic Force, she wants to collect all these chiral energies and exponentially increase her powers to produce an army of magical beings. Then, she can become the ultimate overlord of Briarwood and the Underworld. Norg the Yeti is basically a dweller in the icy mountains of Flurius's frozen fortress. He cracks jokes here and there, acting like a bumbling buffoon but secretly he's a powerful fighter and has some sort of foresight, able to predict the next place containing chiral energy that the rangers are heading to. Perhaps Flurius sees potential in him, hoping to make him a useful acquaintance. He easily fends off invaders a few times. Also, Norg manages Flurius's chiral light items but has been seen absorbing the chiral energies behind her back. He is played by the same voice actor as T-Skin. On to the next set of villains, we have overdrive rangers per effect enemies, the fear cats. The species of the fear cats are called Felis Novice on a parallel evolution amongst the human timeline, rather than being evolved from apes, they are evolved from ancient feline creatures. They have appeared throughout human myths as demons, yokai, werewolves, and skinwalkers. There are many urban legends about them. They coexist but rarely interact with humanity. However, these fear cats that the rangers are facing are exposed to chiral pollution. Mig is hit by the residue energy of Red Dragon Thunder Sword Warrior Mode. Benglo is mutated by the White Tiger Sword Warrior Mode power. Cheetar was transformed by the remnant energies of Tor the Shuttlezord. Crazer has been powered up by a remnant piece of the Cursed Wolf Mask of Zeneca Residue Energy, making him look similar to the Predazord. Not all Felis Novice are evil but the Fear Cats are, these chaotic psychopaths loves causing death and destruction for fun. 
they enjoy seeing lives struggling in pain and agony, which gives them joy. Basically imagine edgy teens playing Grand Theft Auto to be cruel for the sake of fun. They don't care if they destroy the planet while being on it, as long as they are enjoying it while the world burns. Later, after learning more about the fear cats, Mac understands why his father wants him to focus on the importance of his duty and responsibilities or he isn't too different from the fear cats, all fun and loving not a care in the world. Last but not least, our final villain faction is the fiery fiend, we have the egotistical, evil genius Mulder with his powers based off of the energies of the first mighty Morphin Megazord and his foot soldiers, lava lizards, produced from the Dragonzord residue energies. He seems to be obsessed with Mr. Hartford, always finding ways to see if he can outsmart him. Mulder has a sense of mutual respect towards Mr. Hartford as well, always planning around Mr. Hartford's strengths to challenge his rangers fairly. Mulder's twisted sense of justice stems from the fact that the Earth has been invaded countless times by evil space aliens, Rita, Zed, Rito, Master Vile, Machine Empire, Divatox, Astronema, Trachina, Lothar's ET friends, and Gruum the Galactic Overlord from the future. It is Earth's time to counter-invade the stars. Basically using offense as the best defense. Tired of having the Earth invaded, if he could collect the residue power, he will raise an army and dominate the galaxy so the Earth will never be conquered again. Claiming his goal is altruistic, his attacks on Earth are just collateral damage. Similar to Max's idea on protecting the Earth, thus he became the Red Ranger, but he doesn't believe in counter-invasion. However, this altruistic dominance may not be Mulder's true intentions as he is more interested in acting against the interest of Mr. Hartford's interests just because. Somehow, he seems to be jealous of the Red Ranger. Strange enough, there were many times Mulder could have finished off the Rangers, but he often hesitates and holds back. Why is he doing this? Mulder also has a powerful ally that is the Overdrive Ranger's nemesis, Tizon. Since the start of the season, Tizon, a reptilian humanoid monster, has been Mulder's Goldar. Powerful enough to easily take out the Rangers but is in constant physical agony. He is sent out to assist the monster of the day. It's only Mulder's pride that hinders Tizan's mission and often Tizan's sense of honor stopped him from finishing the Rangers. In Tizan's flashback, he was part of an intergalactic search and rescue humanitarian group. He is the captain of his crew and they were sent on Earth for a rescue mission to save humans from the United Alliance of Evil during the season Power Rangers in Space's finale countdown to destruction. Tizan's entire crew encountered the psychotic fear cats during the middle of the mission. They destroyed his crew. Having survivor's guilt, he has sworn to hunt down every single fear cat. So nobody would be harmed by these monsters again. Throughout the years, Tizan has been successful in using Mercurian technology to capture many fear cats in the Hydrargyra mirror. However, he lost possession of the mirror which was later found by the Overdrive Rangers. Realizing the fear cats are products of chiral energies, Tizan attempts to give himself an upgrade. After tracking down the Dino Thunder Rangers, he witnessed the battle when that team was working with the SPD Rangers from the future. Using his Mercurian technology, he hacked into Dr. Tommy Oliver's database. Studying extensively and taking inspiration from the SPD Omega Ranger, Blue Centurion from Turbo, and Dino Thundered Swords, Tizan tries to create his own morpher through reverse engineering. Because he doesn't have the proper equipment for the chiral energies he has collected, it ends up mutating him into a reptilian monster, giving a twisted resemblance to the Cephalazard from Dino Thunder. He cannot revert back to his humanoid form but the new monster form gave him super strength. Tizan learned from his failures and was able to build his own detector, which has three modes, Lance, Blaster, and Detector. The detector proved useful in finding chiral energies and chiral lights. The reason Tizan is willing to work for Mulder is because Mulder promises to fix his mutated form and join forces to take down the fear cats together. Thank you for watching How to Fix Operation Overdrive Part 2. In our next part, it will be an in-depth story about the heroes. What did you think about the villains? Who is your favorite Power Rangers villain across all season? And why? Please comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe!